Welcome to this Saturday edition of AKT Celebrity Reads. I'm your host, Alexis K. Tyler. It is Saturday, August 26, 2023. I want to go over some things that I have said that have come true, that have started to come true. I told you at the beginning of August, I just looked at the date. I took a screenshot. I shared it on my Instagram. I shared it on my YouTube community forum. It was at the beginning of August. I told you Nipsey said there were going to be more mass shootings at schools and colleges. I saw a college campus. I saw high school. I saw elementary school. I saw bomb threats on children bringing them to school. I saw white nationalist groups, white supremacist groups. I saw them underground. You all tell me if I'm lying. Okay. I put the video there. You can go back and replay it to see if I'm lying. I saw white people at these schools and I saw them having secret underground military training camps and bases and paramilitary groups tied to white nationalism that were also trained in the military. Um, the police force, private uh, mercenary groups that are in the U S as well as Mexico and overseas where they get their training at. Um, did you all see it today? This is the X. Uh, what is this? The X handle anniversary from 1960. It was March, uh, excuse me, August. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. August uh, 27, 1960 in Florida. It was a racially inspired shooting, I think, where racist whites attack blacks and shot blacks. Please correct me if I'm wrong. This is absolutely amazing. Did you all see the shooter today in Florida? And I'm telling you right now, I see the police let some of those shooters get away. They let this happen. Did you see it? It was a white man. Am, am I wrong? They said it was a Nazi white man, a racial supremacist. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'll wait. You can just put it in here. But didn't, didn't, didn't I say it, though? Go look at the video from about three weeks ago. It was beginning of August. I said Nip had said it. Then when Nip had told Drip, huh? And, and, and I saw, I said, these is white children. These is young white peoples. But do, 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 huh. you can go back and listen to it and you can tell me if I'm lying, huh? I seen some white peoples do it. I told y'all and it, and, and it was going to be tight. This is going to, this is the first time I, I told y'all I had been looking for it. Like I had looking for the airplane crash and the airplane problems. Uh, this is not going to be the first one. And I also mentioned LGBT. Excuse me if I'm missing one of the apple bits in now. This is going to be also some white transsexuals or uh, homosexuals that are mad because they can't, they feel like they're being suppressed and they can't be they self. And it's political views, uh, racial views, religious views. Uh, laws that they don't like in place or need to be changed or expanded or public opinion views that are going to be involved around some of these shootings as well and going to be on medication. Um, I have to look up the right name because I don't think I'm getting the whole name correct, so I'm not going to say it. The type of medications... Uh, for psychiatric treatment of somebody that's going as well as somebody going into treatment, trying to transition from a man to a woman, but still don't feel like a woman and deal with a lot of self-hate issues and the way they're treated. Hmm. 
in this world and in this society. And this is also going to be tied to these shootings. Let me tell you something. Y'all need to be careful with some of these polices. Not police. Police. Polices. Or ex polices that y'all go with and deal with and get caught by yourself with them somewhere. They hem you up, take you somewhere by yourself. All police are not bad. I'm talking about the ones that do shit like this here. Police that are also military or ex-military. You better look at these ones on these bases. Fort Hood and some of these military bases where these killings come up and they said a soldier committed suicide or uh, they don't know what happened to them. They just found them dead. Them soldiers, they got groups of mercenary and renegade soldiers that are bloodlust, bloodthirsty. You better warn your loved ones that are in the military. Or if your ass is in now, or you finna take your ass in now. If you in the know and you're in the military, you start asking around, observing things, finding out. And I'm going to tell you, some of these ones are black people. Niggas in there. It's not just white ones and not just racist ones. It's niggas in there killing, uh, raping men and raping women and getting together in little rogue bands because they are taught to be legal murderers. Like police are taught to be legal murderers and get away with it. And then they come over here and have a bloodlust and well, a lot of them psychiatrically ill anyway on site meds and just like to do shit like that, like to prostitute little girls, rape little girls, rape little boys, and just like attack people, attack men and wrestle with them just to kill, wrestle for the kill. That's what Nips is telling me. A lot of this is going on. They're going to start coming out and it's going to get worse up as well as these police doing it and staging and setting up these type of robberies and shootouts. Just like they went in that man house a couple of days ago, I was in front of the house. All the police been suspended right now. Shot that black man house up. They said he was a Moor and that he was sovereign and that the United States were under treaties with Morocco and he didn't have to have a driver's license to drive on the street. He didn't have to pay his taxes. He didn't have to pay his mortgage. I think after his brother died, he stopped paying his mortgage. They said they had had run-ins and problems with him before. And uh, came to his house the other day. I don't know what happened with it. Made him come there. I thought somebody sent him over for a wellness check on him. They said it was so many goddamn bullets over there. I don't know how many rounds, but they said it was so many bullets over there. It did not justify the shooting, did not justify the situation and the circumstances. And I think he might have been shooting back and they end up murdering him. But they say it was unjust. Something was unjustifiable about the force. And even the police force, usually they, they will drag their ass about it. They immediately put them on suspension. I told y'all these kind of things was going to get more worse and out of hand. And I think that man kind of slick had a mental problem. Even though he said he was a more, he was not with a more society that protected him and protected his rights. It seemed like he had been taught by somebody, but he was not defended by them or protected by them. And the state that he was in, the police, the judges, nobody respected whatever rights he said that he had and whatever law he was under or say he was above the United States law. He was a sovereign citizen. They weren't trying to hear that shit. I went over there and shot the shit out of his ass. And his son was even begging him to stand down. He wouldn't stand down. Uh, his house was sold from up under him because he refused to pay the mortgage, would not pay the taxes and say he had the right to do that. I'm not saying that you don't. And I've heard that before. And I've had people try to tell me and teach me that. But then I've seen niggas down here in Atlanta get locked up in jam. I do not see white people getting locked up in jam that do the same sovereign free man status. So uh, I'm going to leave that alone, player. I mean, I've seen other Moors that have their own land, their own government, their own city, their own society. They have their businesses structured and they're honored by the United States government, the IRS. They don't have them kind of problems. When I see people by themselves in this situation, they usually get fucked or they go to court trying to run that shit on one of the white judges down there. 
at the Atlanta courthouse and shit, even if, if, if it's a black judge, they don't know anything about that law or they're going to pretend to you that they don't know anything about that law and they lock they ass straight the fuck up down now for trying to say they sovereign and they got a traffic ticket and they didn't have no license. They said they don't need one. They try to show they caught. They more sovereign they caught. The judge ain't trying to hear that. They send them police in there to lock their ass up. So see, mm-mm. No, I don't think I'm going to go that way. Because <laughs> I, a lady was telling me that, that this white lady was saying that on a video, you know, you don't have to pay your taxes for your house and they can't do nothing. They ain't going to take your house. I was like, you know what? That white lady can get away with that shit. Okay. She got blonde hair, blue eyes. She can talk that shit all day. And folks ain't going to do nothing to her. God damn it. I'm going to pay my taxes. God damn it. I don't, I ain't, uh-uh. I'm not finna sit in here and go peep in a corner and 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 take my gun and bust a damn hole in the glass and shoot through the window shit down in the bushes. No. Uh-uh. I think I'm gonna obey these laws, whether I agree with them or not. See. I'm not, I'm sorry, honey. Whoever this is, GWA, I'm not finna refuse to pay my taxes or uh, drive with a, without a driver's license and then say I'm sovereign, get locked up and then get out and try to sue. No, I ain't never went through that. I don't want to go through that. You want to do that shit and listen to that shit. You go do it. I don't, and if the lady up for Texas, she got out and she's still talking. What she said is true, but they will lock you up to teach you a lesson and I, so whoever said I can sue, no, you can sue they ass and you do that shit. And you take all your money and get locked up and get out and pay all them legal fees on them lawyers to get your ass out of some shit that you didn't even have to get yourself into. Don't try to talk me into that shit. No, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. I'll, I'll just keep on working every day. Goddamn pay my bills. Huh? Mm -mm, I ain't finna get in that. I see, you see what happened. He went back down knowing he didn't have anybody in the law to justify his actions. They said they ain't killed him. And I really don't think nobody's going to be able to do it. And his family going to be really be able to do anything about it because they're going to look at the paperwork and look at the law and justify the shit. Now, Nisha, I'm going uh -uh, to stay at that shit. I don't want to be, y'all not finna see no mugs. Not, whoever said it ain't finna occur with me. And then you, I said, and do that bullshit, and y'all see me all over the news with a mud shot. No, uh uh. With some chain yang clothes on, and a plastic house shoe, with them footies, with my heel hanging out the back with some rust on it. Nah, bitch. I don't know what you're trying to set me up for, but motherfucker, I ain't going for it, goddammit. I ain't going for it, T Bone. Um, You see this here, but I kept telling y'all, Nipsey and his grandmama. Grandma Hustle was up there, been in Alaska over a year. I was talking about them earthquakes up there and them underground bunkers with the military and them volcanoes up there. You see earlier today, it's a bad volcanic eruption up there. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the screenshot. Y'all can look it up. See, y'all can check. I like what a lady said about me on Instagram a day or two ago. She said, y'all, y'all don't like drip. And y'all be hating on her, but y'all be big mad at her because she be having all these receipts. Y'all say she crazy and she lying, but then she drip have all these receipts. Canada been on fire because they doing it on purpose, like they doing it over here. You see, they call it Cancer Alley or Cancer Street or something like that down there in Louisiana. You see that that uh, factory been set on fire down there. I ain't gonna even say caught on. I said set on. See. Releasing toxic chemicals and gases out of there that make people get cancer. And they, uh, I think the EPA went in and some other agency went in. They had to quarantine the area and they claim it's safe to go back in that area. But what about the water? What about the soil where that stuff spewed out in the fire and the fumes and landed down on the earth and in the water and on the animals? Hmm. So you're some spots on fat because they're doing it. Just like they burn it up and killing the animals. 
to give you the hybrids. This shit happened so fast. I, uh, I'm i trying to remember what I, I don't remember. I got the screenshots and gave my sister a screenshot this year. Wow. Because I had said this man said, and I said, y'all watch this going to be some white shooters. But it's some secret black serial killers and black shooters that are out here as well. And then I t- see the FBI. Look at the article, baby. It said the FBI knew about it and the FBI had been tracking them. The FBI had been watching them. But see, I also seen a shooter get away. They said it was one shooter and he killed himself. That's not true. They are not telling. That's not what I'm seeing. That's not what Nipsey showed me. I seen it. And I looked in that area. It's been a lot of shootings like every year around this time and other times because they are celebrating the racist anniversary. Um, I don't know what the population over there is. This is a high black. It has to be because he went over there and shot. The spirits are already telling me some other things going on over there too that the police is a part of like gang activity, drug activity, different setups and murders, like deals they have made with people over there. Well, I, when I'm right by Andre Richardson's toll, someone flicked the smoke cigarette on the ground. They're doing it on purpose. They are doing it on purpose to, to bring this this down to a certain certain way. You say you live a, you you live right by Fort Hood and Colleen. Do you have you researched it or looked it up to see if a lot of uh, murders or uh, officers come up dead over there? Because there's certain ones like Fort Hood, certain military bases where officers come up mysteriously dead and they will say they killed themselves. And uh, well, like I say, our police are not bad. I would never vote for defunding police. Never, ever. Because you need them. Because who else is going to be bold enough and courageous enough to take on crime and be out here in the street? I don't know any other group that will do it. So while these black people talking about defund the police, when these niggas know that and get loose. Hi, Spook TV. Hi, sweetheart. And they get worried that these niggas gonna start breaking in your motherfucking house and beating your ass more. They already do that to their own people. It's going to get worse. You won't be able to call 911. So who else are you going to call? It's going to be every man for themselves. I would never support no shit like that. All police are not dirty and evil and low down. I never said that. And I met some good ones that never did nothing to hurt me. And and they were at my home by themselves. They could have done something, but they didn't. You know, uh, or stop me. You know, my car they didn't do nothing to me. You know, unfortunately, it was a white police and a black police, an African police. They lied um, when they were chasing my son in January 2015 because he didn't know the police. They had an unmarked car and it was dark and he was paranoid because he had already been attacked by uh, a police, did dirty shit to him. And they, the white one beat him up while the black one stood and laughed and watched it. Luckily, his cousin was there. They made him, it was in the winter time, January 2015, made my son walk up, no, made his cousin walk home in the rain. He was beating him and then pulling a gun on him. It's to blow your brains out. And his cousin started crying and begging him, please don't kill my cousin. <laughs> Said my son was trying to fight him and resist arrest and had a gun on him. Luckily, my nephew was there because that never happened. If he was by himself, they probably would have murdered my son. Had tore his face up so bad that I thought we were going to have to get plastic and reconstruct his surgery. His lip was split in two places. His face was cut below the eye and hanging down like a piece of meat sliced off in his face. And it was clear that he was jealous of my son. And he wanted to destroy his face because that's where he was hitting him at. He didn't hit him all over the body. He hit him in his head and his face. It was raining and it was freezing cold in January of 2015. 
before he was arrested to go to prison. And this white man, it was so much bigger than him. And it's literally legally justified bullying, assaulting and murdering because you can't defend yourself. You can't fight back. And he had to stand there and take that shit. And then they wrote up a false report. They're known to do dirty shit like that down here. And took my grandmother's car, impounded it, locked my son up. I was looking for him all night long. I was in L.A. And my daddy came to me and told me to find his grandson. That's how I found out. I was calling my grandmother. He was in her car. I said, Mama, where's Chris? Is Have you seen my son? He said, he's out with Shaq, which is his cousin, in my car. I'm waiting for him to come home. And it just so happened that when I was talking to my grandmother, I heard him. Grandma, grandma, grandma. They got Chris. They got Chris. They beat him up and put a gun on him. I think they done drove him somewhere and killed him. They took your car and made me walk home in the rain. And he was shaking and soaking wet and told us what they did to him. I called all night, called Grady. That's usually where they take him. Grady, Grady Hospital. They said he wasn't there all night. And it was my daddy came to see me and told me, find my grandson. That's when I found out what had happened. And the black cop went along with it and wrote it up and said, my son was running down the street, resisting arrest. And my nephew saw it. My son did not run. He took that beating. So this kind of shit happens all the time. But every police officer does not do that. And I still would not vote to defund police. You got dirty people in every profession, in every walk of life. That's what I'm telling you not to be out by yourself in case they, some dirty police, you don't know they're dirty, pull you over, thinking you alone, get ready to rob you, shoot you because they rob drug dealers. I were doing that in the area where they did it to my son up there off of Glenwood. Columbia, Columbia Drive, Glenwood area, they do that shit over there. And this is what they did. They called this dirty white sergeant, this old white sergeant that be over in that area that's been over for like 20 years doing that kind of shit and told him what they did. And the uh, white sergeant said, you know, you can't let him go like this with his face like that. So now you got to make up something. You got to charge him with something. Have you charged him? They said, no. My nephew heard all this. He said, you, now you, you can't just let him go after you did this. You got to charge him with something. That's when they wrote the report up and told them lies in there. And if we had did not have a witness, we never would have known. Thank you, Tanya Brown. Luckily, when he got to the doctor, he got down to Grady. He said it was a, a white doctor. I think he had an accent. He might have been from, um, I don't know, one of them African countries. He was from overseas. And said, he said, can I see a mirror? And the, and the doctor kept saying, no, no, you can't look at your face. No, don't look at your face. I'm going to fix it. And he said, no, I could take it. Please let, that's how I knew. He said, when the doctor turned, let him see his face, his lip was cut, split open in two plates, just dangling down. The skin on his eye was dangling down. He said, don't, it's okay. It's okay. And I was so glad they didn't fuck him up because there's a lot of racist doctors down there at Grady. And dirty black motherfuckers down there that work down there that don't care that'll fuck you up down there. And he put his face back together. I see I had told him, see, he, he never listens to me. I told him, I said, I see a swarm of locusts coming out here. They're trying to send black magic against you and me. They want to kill my child and justify our relationship. He had just got out and I was hoping he stayed clean and stayed out of trouble, but I know that's why I made that, that video with him, De Niro Red and Arrogant, De Niro Red featuring Alexis K. Tyler, Arrogant, because I had a feeling. And I know they had put something on him. My mother had put black magic on him. So she couldn't get me to go to jail and do dope. She, she was over there. I didn't even know it. He wouldn't tell me. Getting high and drunk with him and luring him down that path. I just could feel like that. I'm going to take this, do this music video with my child. At least I can look at my child until I see him again. Cause I got a feeling he going to get locked up. I ain't going to see my child. I'm, I'm going to do this video with him. And I paid to set it up to have them videos and songs and stuff done. I know they were going to do that to my baby. Um,
I told him mm, November of 2014, because remember he got shot, God damn it, in early 2014. They tried to kill him then. The, his uh, gang members tried to kill him because he wanted out and jealous of him then because his style and the rap and the girls liked him and they were competing with him about different girls and shit and didn't want to help him with his career or get put on because they was jealous because he was better than them and nice looking and shit. They ki- tried to kill him then. And in November, I told him, Chris, and you know, just a coincidence, I had my child on this day. This is my baby birthday today. Yeah, Virgo. And I said, uh, I want you to stay with me. Don't don't go out. Stop drinking. Stop getting high because I see it. And I knew that bitch, Jamila, that was uh, trying to go with my son and turn him against me. And they were doing black magic. They were bragging about it. Just like she did a video a couple of months ago, I'm supposed to be doing a death spell on me and had my picture up there drawing black magic marker trying to erase my face. I don't tell you I'm the queen of the South. I'm not getting ready to die, bitch. Whatever you sent on me, it returned to send a three times three. You better get your insurance policy, your goddamn self, trying to kill me because I ain't finna go nowhere. Hmm. That same bitch was harassing me and my son and trying to do black magic. I said, they sending that spirit down here. I saw it. It was a black swarm flying from up north. I knew it was coming from there to Atlanta. I say, stay here, please, until we can figure out what type of work we need to do and how many people we need to get together because I see it. They want a police to stop you and they want it out on expressway and beat you in your head and shoot you in your head in front of everybody. They're going to do this and pull you over. You got to, this is a curse. They sent him down here and I, I could not control him. He wouldn't listen to me. And I told him in November, I said, they they doing this now. I said, you got to stay here. That was November, 2014. The police did that to my child in January of 2015. I They almost killed my child. And then he started doing what I seen. At the, in between him beating him, he said he would pull the gun and pointed at my son's head and said, I'll blow your brains out. And my nephew started screaming, said, please don't do that to my cousin. Who this is bothering me. It still hurts me so bad. I cried about two, three weeks after that and saw my child face. And then say so beat him and he did it about two or three times, kept pulling it. And something, I don't know why he didn't do it. But he pulled that gun, take a break, be my child, and pulled that gun, pointing his head, said, I, ooh, I just feel like blowing your brains out. See, that was that spirit that they put on that man to do that to my child. And, oh, Lord God, if they had done that, I wouldn't have been right no more, and that man would have cursed himself with death. If he had killed mine, it would have came right back on him and whatever charity he got. He's still going to pay for it if he ain't paid for it already. I just don't know where he got them, but I got his name. And uh, tr- then after that, tried to put my son in prison to cover up what they did. That case was still hanging over his head from 2015 up until a, a month ago. And I told him to do what I said. I said, you never do what I said. You do what I tell you to do this time. And uh, and I said, I'm going to work on it here. And you just do what I tell you. Say what I tell you for once in your goddamn life here. Uh, he did. And they brought him up here. because case was up here. Tried to make him take uh, another 15, 20 years in prison. I said, don't take it. I, I'm handling it. Just do what I tell you to do. He said, okay, mama, I'm not taking it. Went the public defender trying to talk and act like a woman, telling him that he needs to take the plea and get back. He said, I want a jury trial. And he said, he was gay and, and, and telling him, no, you gonna you need to go on and take this plea. I said, he want to go ahead. He don't give a fuck. He want to go ahead and plead this case out and sign and get you the fuck out of his face. And you tell him no, and you ask for a replacement. 
I don't know, Andrea. They they listen to everybody else to get them fucked up. They don't want to listen to us. Uh, he listened to me this time, though. And he said, because uh, it was just hanging over his head and they're trying to give him more time. He would have been about 50, 60 years old getting out. And I said, uh, you tell him no. If you want to get a jury trial, you tell him in front of a judge you don't want him. And they said, you can't fire him. And I, he said, I said, you tell him. You want to speak to the DA or the judge? And he said, I don't want you to be my lawyer. He said, you can't fire me, so go to the DA. And the lawyer went to the DA and told him what my son said. They charged him, like, with two or three felonies. I tried to say he had a gun and pulled, was going to get a gun. My son did not. And he didn't run. He said, I'm not going to plead guilty and take 20 years for something I did not do. And my, my cousin is a witness. To this, did we? I didn't do that. Uh, he got in there in the courtroom and got up, and the judge was there, and he did the prayer. The judge let him pray. You know, judges don't do that. Uh, he knew my son from other cases when he was younger, getting in trouble. He let my son pray, and he was respectful to the judge. And the DA said, "You know what? I'm I'm gonna and what you asked me for. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna give you that deal." And we're going to drop this to a, to a uh, misdemeanor and just pay your fine and we're done. And the judge say, I remember you, young man. You know, I'm glad to see you again. You're all right. And, and we will go with that. It was over. <laughs> it was, it's over. And he called me and I said, oh, so you did what I told you. And he said, mom, you're going to believe this. And he told me what I just told you. And I said, that's odd. And I said, I told you <laughs> it was going to be all right. I just wish you had listened to me because you that never wouldn't have happened to you. But, you know, a lot of times they do their parents like that. Uh, they'll do their mother like that, especially somebody, even a seer. The seer have a lot of time, a harder time with relationships and a harder time with their children. They don't want to believe you. They don't want to say you're right. They don't want to give you the credit for the shit. And um, you just have to fight them. So I told him, I'm not going to fight you this time. I'm tired. I'm so tired. So what I'm going to do is, and all the bullshit I've already went through with other people. And my whole life, I said, I'm going to let you do what you want to do, okay? So you don't want to listen to me this time. You don't listen to me, but baby, I'm tired. And you're not my baby no more. You're a grown man and I'm tired. So I'm going to let you. He's like, why are y'all trying to control me? Let me be what I want. I'm, You know what? I'm ready to let you do it now because I can't take no more. You be done killed me with this shit and I'm not going to worry about you no more. You're right. I'm going to let you go. So you don't want to do what I said. You do it your way because you've been doing it your way and look where the fuck you at. So I guess you like it. So God damn it. You just go on here. Yeah? I can't take no more. And he went and did what I said. So, uh, I said that and told you that little fucked up bedtime story. But like I said, I still do not hate all police. I do not distrust all police. Because I knew that that one was coming and he was going to run into I seen a white one doing it. And he wouldn't listen to me. I can't be with him all the time. He wouldn't tell me where he was. And I kept blowing up his phone. I felt it that night. And I kept blowing up that phone. He would know it was me and deliberately wouldn't answer the phone. And every time I call him trying to warn him, he would not answer that phone and some fucked up shit that I beat on scene. And I give it to him in detail. Like I give it to y'all and other people. Shit happened just like I got them and said. What you said, Trina. Things happen for a reason. Well, you know what? I can't even think about no good reason that happened to my child. I really can't. But that's his life and his choice. He chooses to disobey me and go outside of my protection. And do things and be with people that ain't no goddamn good. Thank God he's still alive. But you you know, everybody got, got their own free will. It's time when I was younger and I got readings. I don't want to believe when people said my mother was dirty. My mother was sabotaging me and sent me up. I, a part of me knew it, but a part of me didn't because I didn't catch the bitch. The bitch was sneaky and dirty. 
But then, and, and so I would still deal with her, but then I said, I want to see for myself. So I would deal with her to see, because I know once I really see and I'm done with the bitch, then I'm done with the bitch. And it was painful, but I wanted to see. I didn't want to just keep seeing. I couldn't see what these seers were seeing at the time, even though I could. And I would tell her I saw this and I had this vision. She said, I didn't do that. You know, I wouldn't do that. Something wrong with you. You're just crazy. And I realized now I wasn't crazy. Even though she was my mother and was so-called a uh, prophet of God, the God in me was still warning me not to trust this bitch. And she was a dirty ass fucking bitch. And I just didn't want to believe it. And I was hoping she would change. When somebody do you real dirty, I don't care who the fuck it is. You need to leave them alone or deal with them until you see it for yourself because they don't change. And if your mother's dirty, she's never going to change. People just don't want to believe it because they don't believe the lady that gave birth to them can do that. It's just a female. It's just a bitch. And she's looking at you like a, just a bitch on the street. You're not nothing to her. You're not nobody. What else am I trying? Am I trying to remember that has happened to you? Uh, this has blown my mind. <laughs> and there's more of this that's going to happen. And I know military people watch my show and law enforcement people. That's why I'm telling you, if you are military, you better watch out for these rogue officers in there and soldiers in there that like to get off on doing shit like that and even trafficking children and trafficking other soldiers, raping them, and setting them up, and it'd be groups of them that murder one, or isolate them, whether it's a black person, and they're racist, and don't like the person having rank, because they're black, and be very intelligent, go high up, and they don't want them to go high up, or it's black people doing it, I see, it, it, it's really both, a lot of times y'all will think somebody black been killed in the military or interracial couple or something killed in the military. And then they, this is, is a true story here. This white man was in love with this black woman. I think they were in California somewhere. They got married. The man was a military officer. And one day, all of a sudden, and then he had gotten a bonus from the military of $30,000 a lump sum. One day, they, the police, people in the family didn't hear from him. So the police went in there, I guess the military police, or I'm not sure, also the state police. Because, you know, they had their own tribunal system that deals with them over, you know, the state police. They handle their own thing. They found them cut up and murdered and blood everywhere and took their blood and wrote KKK all over the walls and raped a woman, made her husband watch her be raped and get the legs all over real wide and beat her and stabbed her and beat him because they didn't like the fact that he married a black woman. Mm. Come to find out some black military officers went in there and did that to that black lady and that white man. They didn't like it. They had been committing crimes and committing murders, murdering other officers, and then staging it to look like white racist officers were doing it. So it's a mixture. A lot of, of y'all look up to black people and look up to black men and, and think these men are so special and they would never do this and they would never do that and there are no black. I told y'all, it's black men that also got these men with they butt tooted up naked, like in cages with no drawers on, with damn zip ties around their ankles and holding their feet together and fucking them all in the act, man. Giving them a dog bowl, maybe like go for days, don't get them no water and giving them no uh, food and make them eat damn puppet chow and shit out of can or cold. Or, or dig it out and put it in a damn uh, plastic dog bowl, make them bark like a dog, put a chain on them, had these women in the dark web, selling them from the United States, moving them to other countries, getting a lot of money from for them. They come up missing, and a lot of them will date them or get you to meet them somewhere just for 
your body and the organs because they can make hundreds of thousands of dollars on your blood and your organs. And these, they have people to transport them and illegal weapons inside of the military. You know, I haven't sat down and really done a reading on the young man, the Eritrean young man that's an engineer, I think a software engineer. He had just what gotten a job with Netflix and left New York where his mama and his family is and went to take the job. What state did he go to? Some part of California, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, woman, what they tell you, Trace Jackson? Say, um, he have been missing since last Monday. he been missing a week, almost 10 days. And he got a Uber ride or one of those rides to Netflix. And, and the Uber driver said they dropped him off in front of Netflix, the office, and... Yeah, Johannes, is that the way to pronounce it? And after that, he disappeared. Huh. Have they heard from him yet? Or does anybody have any information on where he went? But I think he was actually, he got to his destination at the Netflix. And after that, nobody saw him. Jose, for at least what ain't nothing to play with. I don't understand. Yep, hit my cash up. Make it clap. Donate to continue to do so I can continue to do the work I do. Put the information out that I do. This is very hard. I wonder, did he talk to someone? Did he meet someone? Or did somebody have to happen to see him? Picked him up or kidnapped him? Or was it somebody connected to Nick? Netflix, a white man that knew about this, huh? You said what they said. They said it took 21 minutes for him to get there because the Uber driver was trying to make more money by giving him a longer way. I wonder, was it a male or female? I wonder, does anybody know, uh, was he gay or straight or was he bi? Because I see a white man got something to do with this here. And I'm wondering if he was going to Netflix to work, why would he detour? Either he didn't want to know his business or someone saw him there or someone knew that was in that building that he was coming and made him a target. That's what I'm saying because I don't want to say it, but I see blood around his face. Hmm. And uh, so I'm kind of wondering here. You said a female friend. Did you, did, did you see anything about a female? Has a female spoken up and said they were dating him or <laughs> they were going to meet him because... If they were, why they find this man backpack with his shit scattered around by the Golden Gate Bridge? Is it the Golden Gate? Correct me if I'm wrong. One of the bridges out there, and I think I have mentioned that bridge before. I seen curses on it. Is is was it the Golden Gate Bridge or what bridge they found his backpack and stuff scattered around? Baby, that's not a good that's not a good thing. So when the person said they think they, that he met a girlfriend. Has a female, any of y'all, come forward? I said he was a retreat earlier, yes. I could look at him and tell. And then I looked it up and seen his name. Yep, Golden Gate. It's curses on that bridge. I saw demons dancing on the bridge last year. And I told y'all to watch driving on these bridges and watch accidents around certain bridges, even bridges over water. Oh, speaking of that. I told y'all, maybe 2019, when Nipsey came here, he told me, Mitchum Fukushima, and said that the radiation was going to... 
it was going to leak again. The radiation was going to leak out from the um the radiation plant, the treatment center, and he said be leaking into the ocean, traveling into California. And you have to watch the milk you're going to buy from the cows and the food in the ocean, the seafood in there because of the radiation. Well, did you see on the news a couple of days ago? Uh, I think it's Japan. They admitted they are pouring live radioactive waste into the ocean. Hmm. From Fukushima. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm just asking. <laughs> because I've said I said this three years ago. And now they admit it. They've been doing it. Like Nipsey had told me. They've been doing it. And now they admit it. Hmm. What are you saying? My apartment number was 11. The funeral was. I don't know who funeral. I can't see it all. You said those Uber drivers. Yes, because a lot of the Uber drivers uh, participated in the uh, kidnapping, the prostitution, the sex trafficking, and the organ stealing. There's something they wanted from this young man. And see, if he went to meet a female, what's the secret in it? And why is he meet a female and missing? Been missing 10 days now. And he, he's a very intelligent man. Just finished. He graduated earlier this year, working a new job. I don't think he wanted to disappear and change his identity or not show up for his job. A female wouldn't keep him from his education opportunities. And I don't think that he would let that happen. I really think somebody got him. And for some reason, I also see as a man he know. If somebody, I, Lord forgive me for saying this, is somebody tied to that Netflix building a white man. And uh, he must have had friends in that building and somebody knew he was coming to the building because, I mean, he worked there. So other people know he worked there. What you said, just going fast. Somebody will ask me some. I'm sorry if I missed it. Yes, and the we had an eclipse uh, two days ago, lunar, and then on August the 30th, we got a rare blue moon. So get your, have your rituals ready. And then Bob Barker just died at 99. The Price is Right. You know, Nipsey Grandma, I love The Price is Right. She was up there on that show. My grandmother loved The Price is Right, too. I used to love it because she watched it every day. Uh, 99 is very powerful, which would also be 6'6". Six, six. Uh, I'm trying to find a question. About, you said, so it wasn't San Diego, San Jose. Mm -hmm. He was leaving from San Jose and caught an Uber. Yes, I said Golden Gate Bridge. Because I had mentioned the demons on Golden Gate Bridge last year. Yeah, I, I knew I was correct when I said that. And I knew it was a part of California. And it said San Jose. Mm -hmm. uh, something happened to him. I don't see he ran off to change his identity and hide. But somebody also, he knew it was two peoples. Might be three. It was a male and a female. And somebody working Netflix. I could be wrong. That's a white male. He had some white friends too. He had all kind of friends. And he'll be intercepted right there. Um, he's very friendly. And that was his downfall. There's somebody he knew. And somebody he didn't know. Oh, I, I don't have all the details. Because I haven't read it. No. Everybody don't know when they mark. Because a lot of people just... just uh, Oh, and, and Andrea Richardson, what about Lord Infamous? Um, wait a minute, I don't know if you said something before, baby. I'm sorry. I don't always look because I like keep my mind on on what I'm saying, so I don't look down here to get my concentration thrown out. You said you said you remember me telling y'all about them Uber drivers with that Lord Infamous child. Lord Infamous, I like him, Lord Infamous off the chain. Like when he was talking about his crush on Nicki Minaj and 
and he said you're working on a new song, and you're going. Nah, 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 nah. I said, that hard, that hard right there, Lord, if I'm that hard, do say some more, finish. I said, that tight right there, that tight. Keep on singing it. I like that guy. Then what you going to do with that? He said, I'm going to give it to my son. I'm going to give it to him so they can all put it out. You know, I give it to him. They'll hear the beat during the day of their head and they drink. Look, Andrea, stop it, man. I said, say some more. Say some more. How it go? That's it. That hard. Is that hard right there, Lord Ember? I like that right there. That right there. You going to put that out? You going to put that that tight? See, that's why they be liking to come talk to me. You know, call. You know, I encourage them. I listen to I said, I said, let me hit beat. That's it. That's it. That's it right there. That's it. I like that. I like that right there. That hard. That hard right there. That real hard on Infamous. Yeah, it kind of remind me of that. That, that, that Freddy Krueger. <laughs> then he told me, I said, I like it. He said, <laughs> like he on that goddamn powder or on that damn pill or something. I don't know. On that damn promethazine. Over there, on that, over that goddamn hell. Lean. On that lean and shit. <laughs> you know, everything was kind of slow motion like when he rap when he talked. Oh, Jose. <laughs> Man, y'all don't be doing that. Y'all be I be sitting right. They be talking to me. They be sharing with me their ideas and stuff. You should watch you. You should I rush. You you see one here. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. You know, I encourage them. I'm trying to say, is there anything else I miss? Yeah, like that day he was talking with his teeth together. He was gritting them. I guess that shit was good. Gritting them, and then everything was real slow. <laughs> you know, I sound like, like <laughs> he got, he laughed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like him. Yeah, you need to come on out with that. I'll send that up here, goddammit. We can jam to that. <laughs> y'all see, you know what? I'm finna leave that man alone. I'm y'all keep fucking fucking with that man and fuck with me and shit. I be telling what you know. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else done happen. I'm trying to keep up with it. And then I'm so goddamn tired and I be busy cooking and shit. I'm getting ready for phase three, this part three of that goddamn it. Um Chang Yang, goddamn ATL, who is Sam? It goddamn, that's a collection of them. Oh, this other one is really some goddamn it. See, Shannon will rush me. I said, You should let me put everything that one we put on there. See, that one was loaded. That pan wasn't big enough. I had to order some big pans, bigger trays so y'all can see what's in there. Her cheese, she had a six cheese bread, a six cheese piece of garlic bread underneath there, but I had so much shit loaded on it that Nipsey told me to put on there. You couldn't see it. Luckily, I love the way she did the video this time. People love the way she did the video. And it looked beautiful, like with the peppers and tomatoes and onions and stuff I had on with the gold silver on top because she remember the gold club. You know, when you donate for a certain amount to get some groceries and get your food cooked, you become a member of the gold club. You just can't give me no little donation to get no gold silver. Well, God damn it. I had that under there. I had some roasted spicy sausage under there with the cheese. Then put another layer of cheese on top of that. Had some um, fajita style steak and chicken chopped up down there with some chili with beef and beans on top of that. Mm. With some old cheese, cheddar and feta cheese on there and special sauce on there. There was so much shit on there. Then them fries, they was fully loaded. I had some crinkle cut French fries that cooked them golden brown. Seasoned them up under there. Put some cheese on top of them, melt some cheese on them, had some steak, fajita steak and spicy chicken on top of them. And some chili uh, with beans on top of there. That's what was under there. Y'all seen the meat and shit on top because I had so much shit loaded on it, but she needed a bigger plate. See, that's that hood shit. 
That's that Chang Yang Shi. But she said she didn't really like the cheese bread as much. So we're going back in. Next week for phase three of that Chang Yang ATL hood style. Nip recipe, goddammit. She likes the honey bun better under there. Instead of the cheesy bread, she likes the sweet bread. So, ooh, we, you'll get the cheesy, the hot, the sweet, the spicy, and the crunch. Because he told me to put some jalapeno. I, I crunched some jalapeno Cheeto on top of it. And I put some jalapeno Fritos and crunched them up on now. And put some of them, um, crunched some Dorito up on top of that. That we told me. And she said that shit was good. Then the motherfucker. And her children tried. I'm so glad that you could hear their voice in the back. And they had tried the chicken. So, I fried them some drumstick. What you said is in Nelson is the company that uses the tech to put watermarks behind the TV shows we watch. So in theory, it's always hidden messages. Yeah, we know that. We've been doing that. So you're going to see the other one. Thank you, baby, because you'll be able to. I got more stuff and I was making the meat sauce today. It's going to be on there. And put that cheese through there so you can dip in it with them nacho and eat that salmon. See, that's that who is she, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a, that's separate from the other food I make. To me, that's like fun. It's like fun food, a little bit of junk food, but it's fun to eat. And it's finger food. And it tastes good. And, you know, stuff I I didn't ever really get to eat much growing up. And it's really like I'm reliving my childhood um, and healing from my younger period when I was raising my child and catching hell. Now I get to have fun. And do all this stuff and make all these things that I never made before. You say I can't watch them food reviews too much. I, what you say? I be hang. <laughs> why you be? <laughs> player, why you hang? Player, player, why you hang? Why is you hating on the food review? Now, y'all wouldn't want to try none if the food reviews were bad. And, you know, they're giving me practice. So thank God I have people to taste test it for me because it's my first time I be trying to follow Nipsey's instructions. He'd be telling me how to make. Oh, and then I had some thick cut maple bacon up under there. I, I had about three or four meats up under that bitch. Yeah, because, OK, bacon, beef, chili with beef. Fajita steak, fajita style chicken. Yeah, I have four, four meats up in there. My stuff is real rich, and I don't want. I ain't get no cheap bacon. I got that thick cut bacon, and and then add that maple to it. It was already thick cut smoked bacon, and I added to it and that brown sugar and cooked it, cooked it down there in it. Yeah, a whole bunch of different flavor, um, in there, and it takes me a lot long time to make it because. You know, I cook each meat at a time, and, I, and then I have to do what Nipsey said. I have to stack, stack. I stack it. He had me stacking layers of shit. That's what I'm telling y'all. You can't see it all. I'm going to try to, because I don't have no camera, nobody tape it as I'm making it. So that's why I did it yesterday, and I showed you just the bread underneath with the cheese and the meat on it. I'm trying to show you how I stack it, because this nigga got me stacking over here. It's layers of flavors and layers of cheeses and sauces and meats and, and so, yeah. And then the French fries are layered and fully loaded. Yeah, he, that's how he told me to make them. Go hard or go home. So everything he has me make is very rich and very decadent. Even the waffle sandwich. I was asking Shannon, she said, well, I've eaten chicken and waffles before. A glass night chicken and ribs, that's a waffle. I said, I haven't. And she said, I don't like my waffles hard. They be hard and brown. Everybody's the same color and the same texture, hard and brown. And she said, I want myself. I said, I already made it. And I took a picture. I said, you see, it's tender and flaky. It's just a little crunch around the edge, but it's very soft and easy to hold it. Very flexible, easy to chew. And then throw that cheddar, that sharp cheddar cheese off in there with that honey and butter. Soaked it with that honey and butter. Laid that cheese, cheese off on top of it. Melted it on now. Then put that goddamn spicy buttermilk chicken on there. Boy, you tell my some good. That's why I wanted y'all to see it. Then Nip told me to hit it off because he wanted some goddamn it blueberry syrup. So I got the blueberry syrup and put some fresh blueberries, some look of blueberries too. They weren't just fresh blueberries. They were the look of salt blueberries on her waffle. She said that shit was good as hell. And I did it early. 
Then I made that country coleslaw. I like that. That coleslaw is real good and sweet. I made it like that KFC be tasting. So that, that, that juice, you know, you can take your cornbread or take your sandwich and stuff and dip it down in that juice. God damn it. You don't want to pour that juice out. You can just sop that juice up with it. No, I'm talking about. See, that's how I had, 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 had it. And then y'all couldn't see it like that cornbread bowl. You couldn't see it, but I'm probably not build it. You're going to see it the next time. It was cornbread underneath. You know, when you see the um the roast beef was real tender with the grave on there, macaroni and cheese, and the collard greens, spicy collard greens in there, it had a thick layer on the bottom of flaky golden honey butter cornbread, baby. All, everybody that tried it said it was good. It was good. And it had them gravies, that, that gravy from that roast beef, that pot looking from that... Uh, Collard green, soaking all down in now. But they ate that shit up. See, that's how I'm telling you, you couldn't see it. I got I'm just gonna next time I build it, I'm gonna let you see the bread first. I'm gonna have to take up take my time, take a picture of the time as I layer as I stack, as I put each stack on there, goddamn it. Stacking that shit from the back. See, you gotta be stacked up and gotta be cornbread fed and shit and collard green thick and that kind of bread, man. And then you go exercise, make your booty pop out. I can't believe he gave me those recipes. And then you said, I throw that, that big old salad off in there. Everybody I done made a salad for love my salad. And now they love the coleslaw with that uh collard green bowl and with them ghetto sandwiches, them hood salmon. And then you know what would be good too is to start getting cold. You get that hood salmon. Then I make you a nice, thick, rich vegetable soup, vegetable and beef soup with a nice, thick stock on it or you know, I got that breath pool salmon too. Had that waffle salmon, throw some cheese and eggs off in that motherfucker and some sausage in there. You want a pancake salmon. You see what I'm saying? That's a salmon. Had some grits in it. You see what I'm talking about with some sauce? Yay, yay. Ah. Thank you, Linda. And make some buttermilk biscuits, you child. But see, I don't really have time. I'm just, I just, it's, I'm doing it now, just experiment and learn. And ooh, wee, I got to tell you about the new heart. I got, I got a new barbecue sauce. I think I will get somebody to mail that for me. Mm, They're going to try it for me next week. I made a pineapple huh, to go with that look of. You see what I'm saying? I got a pineapple yellow rice. Go with it with some chicken. I'm going to make. I got a pineapple habanero barbecue sauce. Ooh, we you time my good. We'll go on your chicken, your steak, or your veggies, or dip it in your wings. You see what I'm saying? A barbecue is a pineapple habanero. And I got a honey jalapeno. And show me how to make it. I cured, you're talking about to cure them jalapenos, habaneros, serranos. I couldn't find no ghosts. I'm looking for some ghosts because they have that Walmart. Them ghost pepper. Put them three in some vodka, goddammit. it. Cured, cured the motherfuckers in now. I know what you're talking about, Jose. You're talking about no, honey. No. What you talking about, drip, please? What I can't, please don't do what? What I can't do? King Nip trying to get you thick and all the rap. Okay. Not just that. He's giving me the menu to serve to y'all. To make for y'all. There's something, you know, people can, can, uh, I look it, niche. I love them and they taste good with this, the honey and in the barbecue sauce. Ooh, it ain't too hot though. But for people that like it hot, I might throw some more hot sauce. I like my shit real hot. That shit good. I'll make some chicken or I'm going to have it on the side of the dip for them to taste the meat with it plain and then dip it so they can tell you how my new sauce tastes. I know. Elefante, thank you, Nip. Okay. He's so sweet. You said I got to be chewing some while you describe. <laughs> but at least it ain't me. Thank God I got people that were willing to trust me enough to try my food. You see, they still alive and breathing. They ain't sick. They sure are still alive and well. <laughs> I 
And uh, those things I feel comfortable to ship right now. But the cooked foods, I have to to get all the instructions for those and make. But to I, I can't I can't leave the house. I really don't leave the house much. And so I we have to. It's expensive trying to get an Uber up there. I sold my car a couple of years ago. It was paid for. I owned it. I didn't need to sell it. I was not in no problem, but I was with my health and I didn't know what it was. And I didn't know it was the uh, mold. It was making my legs and my ankles swell to the point I couldn't bend my foot at the ankle to operate my vehicle safely and press the gas and press the brake. And then it was leaking. So when I it got, I got in that car it smelled like mold. So I was dealing with with an infestation of mold inside of that car and an infestation of mold inside of the house with the leaking. Every time it rained, the driver's side got soaking wet. And I knew that was by design and, and my ex would not fix it. So I had to get rid of it because I couldn't drive that car uh, with some type of defect in the window leaking like that. And now that I've gotten better, um, even if I do that and take an Uber, it's so expensive to go back and forth to the post office to do that. So um, I would have to set up accounts for that. But I have luckily talked to some people, said they are willing to help me do it and find out all the rules and regulations and teach me how to pack things safely. But I'd rather start with small things right now. Um you said they tried with that mo Yeah, I know, Andrea. My my ex did that to me. It was like he was trying to kill me. But luckily, you know, I survived. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm exhausted because uh, I'm I'm always working. It seems like I never get enough sleep. I just want to thank you all that love me and support me and that donate to me. And they help me feed Nipsey and feed the other people that you love in here and do the readings. And and then you all look up things and you send it and confirm the things. And I see some of them and it blows my mind. And somebody was like, why does it blow your mind? Why are you surprised when you say something and it comes true? I I mean, I, I feel like I'm human and... You know, maybe I'm seeing it wrong. Maybe I'm tired, but I'll say it anyway. You know, if I believe I hear it from Nipsey and I trust him, but I still doubt myself, I guess. I I don't, I, I don't, I want to be confident in my work. And I guess if I really was not completely confident, I wouldn't say it. But if I feel strongly about it and it stays on my mind, I'll go ahead and say it. Even though I don't have no evidence of it, I want to be confident, but I don't want to be arrogant. I don't, I don't want to be cocky. So I, I still do get overwhelmingly and happily shocked and surprised when I see these things and when y'all see them. And of course that made y'all trust me and believe in me and support me and follow me. Even when you all say you try to tell family members about being careful, about your sanitation, about your health, and about what what airline you get on, and they laugh, and I don't don't listen to that lady, I don't want to hear that shit, and then when something happens with the planes, they don't apologize, and they don't say anything to the relative, they just get quiet. Uh, They were like, Drip, it feels so good when I tell them I follow you, and I listen to you, and they try to listen, that lady crazy, leave that lady alone, stop listening to that lady, and then the things come true, and they have nothing to say. They just get quiet. They don't say nothing about. So they don't say nothing about you no more. <laughs> Needs of my own mother. Start off attacking me when I was a little girl because she knew about the gift I had and I didn't know. And she used to scare me um, about the gift. Or she said, "What did you dream?" And I remember I was living with my grandmother in the projects, and my grandmother had these dream books, and they would make money off of playing the numbers and my mother would say tell me everything detail of your dreams and then she would get the dream book and look up the number associated with the different symbols that she decided to pick out in my dreams 
And she would play them and get money and then give me a dime and treat me like shit. And then try to suppress the gift and beat us and disrespect us. Um, yeah, it's still going to happen. I'm still looking for it. And I'm looking for the other gunmen that are going to come up in these public places and at the school I'm telling you about. And did you realize that shooting that they did today was near a college campus? You all that are in the area know what I'm talking about. I just don't know the name of the school. Can somebody tell me to verify I'm not lying? It was near a college campus because they said the police had locked the campus down to make sure the students were safe. And there were no gunmen near the students or on the campus. It was near a college campus. I said it was going to be on one. So this was near it. Can somebody confirm what I am saying or if I'm wrong here? That shooting in Florida today, that was near a college. If somebody knows what I'm talking about, because it's on the news, they said it on the news. And they were concerned about the college students because it's so close by. I forgot the name of the street they mentioned. Oh, it was a black college, Justo. Thank you. Here in Jax. Yeah, is that you talking about West Jax? Is that Florida or somewhere else? We know about the Nazi shooter. But one of them, if it was more than one shooting today, one was near the college campus, I think in Florida. My cash app is one word, Queen Drip King Nip. Queen Drip King Nip. Queen Drip. Queen Drip King Nip. I got a blue candle on there. I the candles I have on my baby also. It's, it's lit. What I got on there, you'll know it me. And if you're not sure, take a screenshot of your donation and email it to me to make sure I got it. Now, what that is, you said Edward Walters University. Black Transcendence, can you just humor me a little bit and tell me how many miles was it away from that campus? I don't know. I want to see how close this one got to what I had said. How many? Yeah, they said near Dollar Tree. Can somebody tell me how many miles was the college, the university, away from the family, the, the Dollar Tree where the shooter was? How far was Edward University from the Dollar Tree that the shooter shot the people, shot the black folks in? Wait a minute, Dominique. It was three minutes away. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Blue. Bella. It wasn't even no whole bunch of mouths. Goddamn, this was right there. See, the next ones you're going to start seeing, I'm waiting for the ones that be on the campus, goddamn it, and on the school. That's what I've seen. I saw white folks. I told y'all. Walking distance, goddamn. I told y'all this shit. This shit is just blowing my mind. And it's so scary. Y'all need to be careful because these people are on the loose and they're losing their mind. They're fighting for what they believe is right, even if it means killing people just because the people don't look like them and of a different race or don't have don't agree with their sexual orientation. They wanted a race war. They keep trying to pull it up, and you see that black folks don't want that and ain't trying to do that. And that's what they want to do. Sure, wipe out a whole race of people with the hatred. Thank you, Samantha. I got to do is You don't have to hope I got it. I got to do a screenshot and send it to me to make sure I got it. The blue candle was there. It's me. But my um, Gmail is my name. Alexis K. Tyler VP at gmail.com. And people spell my name wrong. My name is A-L-E-X Y. S S K T Y L O R V P as in vagina power. Alexis K Tyler VP at gmail.com. If you spell my name wrong, I won't get it.
I mean, yes, I know about the Mississippi. That's never stopped, honey. We knew about Mississippi and Alabama and those jails 20 years ago. It never stopped since slavery period, and it's still going on. And now you got black people doing it. Just like that rapper, Ugly God, shot that man down in the police, and his uncle was a judge, and they basically won't charge him again getting away with the shit. So we've been knowing about that. And then one of them ass raped the white police down there, raped that black man in his ass. And shot him in the mouth, and it didn't kill him, but it damaged him. I know about that. We, we've been known about it. It's been going on. This ain't new. And I think they have a lawsuit in right now. And they had to admit it. And they're going to be convicted. But you have to think about the ones that are still doing it that are not. But uh, anyway, I'm tired. Yes, my assistants just put my... my Gmail in there. You can send me a screenshot and I'll verify it's me. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon.